Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is the Little Bean and Me podcast channel. My name's Kayleen, I'm your host. Uh, welcome back uh, to another episode of my podcast. This is a podcast about pretty much crafty things in general, uh, mostly yarn dyeing, knitting, crocheting, spinning, <clears throat> creating yarn bowls this week. Um, and just pretty much anything crafty that I've been getting up to, I like to share with you here. It's been a hot minute since I updated. I think my last update was about a month and a half ago or so. Uh, but I didn't really have a ton to update and things have been busy with the holiday crunch. So I wanted to come on today and kind of share with you the things that I've been working on. So if you're new here um, and you'd like to be subscribed, make sure you hit the button down below to subscribe and tick that little bell icon so you know the next time I upload a video. Um, and if you are a returning subscriber, welcome back. I'm happy to spend this time with you and I'm so glad that you're here. So <clears throat> I apologize in advance for my voice. I'm a little bit sick right now, so um, I'm going to try and cut out any coughing or like sputtering or anything <laughs> related to uh, phlegm in my throat um, and uh, all of that. So I apologize in advance, so sorry, but I can't really help it. So anyway, um, there's there's been a lot in the last month and a half that has been going on, so I'm going to start first with a little bit of a personal update. Um, if you're only interested in crafting content, then I'm just going to put a timestamp here on the screen for you so that you can just skip ahead to the things that I've been working on in my crafty life. But for right now, I'm going to do a little bit of a personal update. So um, since last time I saw you, we've had Thanksgiving, and boy was it crazy. Um, <laughs> we've been going through a lot in terms of Excuse me. <clears throat> We've been going through a lot in terms of, you know, my own mental health. I've been kind of struggling a little bit. Um, and we're also dealing with my daughter who has been having a lot of trouble sleeping on her own at night. Um, and it's not something that she has struggled with in the past in terms of sleep. Uh, she's always been a very good sleeper. So she's five. I think she's just kind of coming into her own. She's got a little bit of anxiety at night. So we're trying to work through that. So I'm a little sleep deprived. <laughs> I'm a little bit, uh, you know, uh, having a little uh, mental health trouble right now uh, in terms of like depression and mood and all of that. So I'm going to try and get that worked out. And also we've had the holidays coming up. We had Thanksgiving, which was a lovely celebration with my family. My mother and her husband came up for Thanksgiving dinner and so did my brother and his girlfriend, which was just lovely. And yeah, it's just, we're just trying to get through day by day. And I'm sure a lot of you can relate to that. Um, and especially those of you with young children. So um, <laughs> that's pretty much the summation of my life up to this point. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't really have much else to say about that. So let's get into some crafty things. I have um, some new things that are going to be in the shop and I want to talk about um, shop update things and products that are coming into the shop, coming into the new year, uh, la, 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 things that I have that I'm slowly running out of um, so that you guys know what's available right now if you want to grab it. Um, and then also the things I've been knitting on and crafting with. So let's just roll into everything. So I think the first thing I'll talk about is knitting since I've been doing a lot of that lately and I wanted to talk about my sweater that I've been working on. So the last update I gave you guys on the sweater I was working on uh, was either last podcast or the previous podcast and I had only made it about a skein into the cardigan. Well, I'm very excited to say that I officially have started a sleeve <laughs> Yes, I've gone through the whole body, attached it, and now am working down a sleeve. So let me show that to you right now. The cardigan that I'm working on is the Georgetown Cardigan by Hannah Fettig, and I am knitting it in Baraka Ultra Wool in kind of like a grayish color. And I will try and hold this up for you um, as best I can so that you can see the progress. Last time I showed you this, we were down here you know, down in like the first skein where I had just worked up the bottom of the sweater and then started the decreases on the body. And I'm happy to say that now I have a wearable garment. Um, so I made the 
So if it's extra small, small, medium, large, and then 1x, 2x, 3x. So I made extra small, small, medium, large, extra large, 2x, 3x. So I think, I don't know. I, I made the 1, 2, 3, 4th one. So extra small, small, medium, large. Yeah, I made large, the large size sweater, which is the size I wear in shirts and generally in jackets and things like that. And I knew there would be at least some positive ease in here. So I made the large size sweater. So here's the sleeve I'm working on. And as you can see, I've made, I've connected the shoulder seams and I picked up my stitches here, which kind of look a little bit funny, but I think it will block out. Um, I had to do that a couple of times because the first time I picked it up, I was picking up continental style, which is how I typically knit, and I was having trouble with the stitches being far too loose. Uh, no matter how tightly I pulled, it seems like these stitches were pretty loose. And so um, I ended up picking up English style, so picking up and knitting, like, and throwing the yarn around to really cinch it as closely as possible and to keep the tension as tight as I could to match the gauge. The struggle I had here, this was my first time doing wrap and turn, and I think my problem here, so you can see that there's like tick marks each time I had a short row for the sleeve cap. And I think when I was doing the short row, um, I think for a wrap and turn you're supposed to, when you're knitting the stitch, you're supposed to go underneath the wrap and knit the wrap with the stitch and I wasn't doing it and by the time I realized that I didn't think I was doing it quite right um, I was already almost done <laughs> with the sleeve cap I think I had about like six or eight more short rows um, to go in the in the patterning and so I just decided that I'm going to do it the wrong way for the whole sweater because it doesn't really matter it's just the shoulder seams and I don't mind seeing the tick marks of the short rows so you can kind of see them here it reminds me a bit of like when you have a raglan decrease and you can just see the seams and I don't mind that look at all so um, having the the seam a little bit more obvious doesn't matter it's just a sweater <laughs> uh, that I'm gonna wear around the house so I'm very excited I've, I've just started down the sleeves I don't think I put a marker in so I'm going to have to read my knitting back when I pick this pattern back up again. Um, and I'm doing magic loop to the best of my ability on this. It's not perfect. It's not exactly pleasurable to do. So I'm thinking about switching to a smaller circular or DPNs, but I just, I just don't really like the smaller circulars. So the problem I have is I really like long needles because when I'm knitting, I'm using the back part of my hand on my needle. And so I found with smaller circulars that I end up having trouble because I don't have that feedback, that pressure point, and it makes it even less pleasurable to knit um, because like my hands, I'm so used to using a longer needle. Um, so if you have any tips on knitting sleeves, I thought about putting this on pause and then doing, um, my second sleeve here, which you can see is just a big hole, <laughs> um, as big for my as big as my face. I was thinking about picking up here, doing the sleeve cap, getting to the same point, and then putting them both on the same circular, or doing two circular needles, two long circular needles, um, to stitch through. So I don't know. I'm kind of still up in the air. I've taken a break. I'd like to get this done you know, so I can wear it this season, but I'm trying not to put pressure on myself as usual. Uh, and I think I'm on the third, third skein, fourth skein, third or fourth skein of yarn here. So this is Baraka Ultra Bowl. Let me see if I can find the color for you. Yes, here we go. So this is the color I'm using here. There's no color name. It's just a number. Yeah. So this I got down at my local yarn shop down at Marblehead Knits. She stocks ultra wool and I enjoy it. It's a really, it's not super, super soft, but I think, you know, after blocking it, it will be a lot better. Um, I use ultra wool sometimes for baby blankets because it's super wash and it's easy, you know, solid colors. And I don't have to worry about alternating skeins because it's all the same dye lot. So I'm not, you know, I'm not worried about that at the moment. So that's the main bit of knitting that I've been working on. 
Um, the next bit of knitting that I've been working on has actually been on my circular sock machine. So for those of you who have been following along the podcast for a little while, you know that I have an Erlbacher Gearheart Speedster machine that I got new about a year ago or so. Um, I think it must have been about a year ago. And, you know, I've been working through different projects on it, experimenting with, you know, different you know, thicknesses of yarn, figuring out the exact gauge that I like for socks. And then last year, um, I had done some sock emergency kits where I paired mini skeins with sock tubes and sold them as a kit. Um, and so I've enjoyed that. Uh, get, picking up my sock machine again and knitting again on it has been great. So I have, I have done a couple of things on the sock machine. Uh, one of them, well actually both of them, are customs for customers. So one customer is having me knit up four pairs of socks for her, with, including heels, toes, and cuffs. It was originally going to be just the cuffs and the tubes, but she's run out of time for Christmas, and so I have offered to knit the socks for her, where um, they're in Patriots colors. So she asked me to dye a deep blue and a red, and so I've been kind of working up different samples, trying to figure out tension on my machine. So this was the first run through of the sock. You can see none of the ends are woven in. Uh, I had a, a bit of time last week to start running through this particular order. And what I was struggling with was trying to decide how I was going to finish the cuffs. So this it's not very neat. I wasn't really worried about things being neat, but this is just the raw edge. So when you do a cuff down sock and you cast on the circular sock machine, technically you don't have to finish off the top edge because you're casting on every other stitch. And then when you're joining in your <clears throat> main color yarn, you end up with a slipped, um, like a stitch through each one. So there's like a, a piece of yarn running around to the first row in every other needle and then you're knitting all the needles down so you're knitting the, the first row is kind of caught on the yarn that's there so it's hard to explain I'm sorry but I don't have to finish this off but I don't particularly like the way that this looks as a presented final product um, on a sock blocker, it wouldn't matter. On your leg, it wouldn't matter. But I, I don't particularly like it. And when I did it, I realized like, oh yes, that's why I end up folding over my socks. So this was just a sample. I just knit about like 80 rows just to see the color, making sure that the color looked nice. Um, it looks a bit brighter on camera right now than it actually is in person. And then I knit the toe down, which is short rows across the machine. You pull half of the needle out of work. Uh, and then here I was having trouble because here's my tension for my sock, which gets me about eight stitches per inch. And then when I put on the brake for the heel, the heel spring, it provides extra tension to the yarn so that you can knit back and forth on half of your needles. And so it was pulling too tight and I didn't like the fabric that was here. I wanted to more closely match the gauge of the, um, of the sock body itself because I feel like it really puckers it in and it doesn't really look that flattering and here's the raw edge that I would have to kitchen or closed um, typically I would turn this inside out and I've done a tutorial about grafting inside out on this channel before and I'll link it in the iCard up here but I would turn the sock inside out and sometimes I finish my toes this way if I, if I keep messing up kitchener you know, and I'm feeling frustrated, this is a really easy way to finish a sock, at least in my opinion. It technically is the Kitchener stitch, it's just a grafting technique. Um, you can graft right side out, inside out, it doesn't matter. Um, I've had people comment on that video saying like, this is the Kitchener stitch, and I'm like, I know it's the Kitchener stitch, <laughs> I know it's grafting, um, but it's just a different way to look at it. So I'll take, you know, the red scrap yarn and I'll go, um, out with my old stitch and in with my new stitch and go all the way down stitch to stitch all the way replicating stockinette through the end and then it will end up with the seamless uh, seam on the bottom of the foot so this would be 
the top of the sock and this would be the bottom of the sock and that would be the seam. And in case there is a mess up on the seam or something doesn't quite look right or the gauge doesn't exactly match 100% perfectly, you know, it's on the bottom of the sock so you're not going to see it anyway. And when you have the ends of the bottom of the sock and you're wearing your socks, the ends might felt together a bit or kind of seal, seal in, if you know what I mean, uh, where the the fibers will just kind of compact together and so it will make a nice seam for the bottom part of the sock. So that was the first. So this is how I typically do my cuffs. Um, as you can see here it is squishier and thicker and it is because I knit double the rows and then, excuse me, then I pick up the first row of stitches on the inside and then I knit down the tube. So it takes that really raw edge that I wasn't a fan of and pretty much tucks it under like this so that instead of this raw edge being on top this raw edge gets knit to the sock like this if that makes sense and then the tube comes out underneath so it finishes the inside of the sock I don't I still don't have to weave any ends or finish the top part of the sock the problem is is that this uses twice as much yarn for the same length of cuff because you're knitting twice as long and then this sock I adjusted my tension by unclicking the tension knob four clicks. So I have my tension set at a certain gauge here, and then when I put on my heel spring, I unclick my tension. So what happens is my stitch gets longer by four clicks. There's no measurement on the machine, it's just the click of the of the knob. There are numbers so you can keep track of where you are, but it's not um, it's not like, oh, this is a 10 and this is a 14. It doesn't. It's just how many clicks I had to undo it. So I undid it four clicks, and you can see here that the tension matches much better than in the first sock, which I'll show you again. Here we go. So you can see here how much tighter this is compared to this. And a lot of machine knitting and especially on a circular sock machine if you're starting up a new project or you haven't picked it up in a while and you don't have your notes or forget there's a lot of trial and error and so I wanted to be sure that I knew exactly how I was going to do things so I've taken notes now oh I'm going to have my machine set here and then unclick for to make my toe and then click back to fix it so now I have knit, and I think I have figured out how I want to do my cuff. So this was the last sock that I knit up. This is actually going to be a sock. I'm going to knit its mate. So this is 115 rows of stockinette. I knit a one by one cuff. And for this cuff, I do have um, a dropped stitch here that I have to repair, but the top of this cuff looks much nicer than the raw top edge of this cuff. I don't know how well you can see the difference on camera, but this has a lot more loops on top. <clears throat> Cut this in. Patience, patience. Okay, okay, <laughs> here we go. So, um, this cuff has more loops so you can see every stitch has like two loops sticking up on the top and then this cuff does not struggling I'm struggling it's been too long so you can see that this cuff is kind of even along the edge here so it doesn't have that loopy appearance like this cuff does so I think this is the way I'm going to do it I do have to repair these stitches you can see um, the technique that I did was a technique suggested by another sock knitter who has a sock machine to um, knit one row of ribbing, pull the needles out of work so there's a, a switch on the ribbon, ribber plate that says in or out. Either your needles are in work and they're knitting or they're out of work and they're not. So what ends up happening is you can pull your needles out of work, knit two rounds, so you've <clears throat> essentially made like a hem inside the sock. You put your needles back into work and then you're pretty much closing that hem. So you end up with a more finished edge around the top of your sock 
And it's the same principle as when I hang my hem and I put all the stitches back on the main needles, the cylinder needles, uh, but it's doing it without having to remove your ribber, hang the stitches, put your ribber back on because you are, you are not knitting for two rows on your ribber and then when you pick it back up again, all of the stitches join together. So it makes like a little, a little hem. <laughs> Long story short, so that's what I did and then I did the same thing with the toe where I Had my normal tension and then I unclicked my tension four clicks to Make these stitches slightly longer so it would make up for the difference when the When the heel spring is on so this is really the main project that I've been working on so these were tester socks this is an actual sock for the woman, and I am going to be working on these tomorrow, which is Thursday. She has, uh, let's see, what's the date? So I need to have these done before next Friday. So I have another week to finish these, and they should be finished within the next, you know, several days um, and ready to go for her. But these are for the men in her family. So what I will do is I'll pick up a heel in each one, depending on the size shoe that... They are, and I think I'll pick it up in a gray because these are supposed to be Patriots, Patriots themed socks. So we have the nice blue, red, and I think the silver gray would be a very nice addition. So that's the first custom order that I've been working on. It's taken a lot of time and love and effort. And I love you, Shelly. I know you probably don't watch this, but I will, I'm taking care of this for you because I love you. <laughs> um, so then the other custom order that I've done, uh, and I just shipped out yesterday, was an order for 12 pairs of sock tubes and tonal um, accompaniments to for this customer to knit socks. So I'm going to put flash a few pictures of here on the screen for you of the socks that I knit. So she had 12 pairs in mind, all different colors for all different people. Uh, but I told her, you know, they, were, we, they would all be knit the same. So 60 stitches, eight stitches per inch gauge, 10 rows per inch for, you know, the row gauge. Um, and that I would get it shipped out, you know, the first week of December. She's not going to be knitting on these until after the holiday, which was okay. Um, and so I messaged her once they were all done, which was, I think, on the 6th or 7th. I said, okay, these are all done. <laughs> all knit. Here's the photographs of all the tubes except one. I needed to make a choice. So she chose. I knitted up. Sent it out yesterday. So these were really fun. Uh, once I got all the yarn dyed, then I was able to knit up all the tubes. I have an extra set here to show you. So this was a purple color. There are 115 rows. Um, so it should be long enough for a foot. And you can pick up to put the cuff, pick up to put the toe, and then cut in for a heel. And so I'll probably list this pair on the shop. So this is just a, a plummy, purpley gradient, speckled gradient. Uh, which was really fun. So she got the other half of this gradient. <laughs> um, and so I've been busy with that for the last two or three weeks, just in my spare time, knitting up sock tubes. So my sock machine has gotten quite a lot of work. I need to disassemble it and clean it because, excuse me, it's gotten quite a bit of use. All right. <laughs> On to the next. So the next thing that I wanted to talk about, oh, was this. So, oh, embroidery. So if I already didn't have enough things to do in my life, uh, why not pick up another craft that I've never done? So last week, I was visited by the lovely Melissa of Skateanigans. She's just started her podcast on YouTube. But if you don't follow her, I'm a longtime follower. Like, we've been following each other for a year or two, two years, two and a half years or something. Uh, and we chat quite frequently. I consider her a friend. Uh, she's so sweet, so lovely, and um, she was up in the area in Boston, and I texted her last week, and I said, oh, we should get together, because I'm home alone, and uh, I would really love to have a friend come visit. So I went and picked her up in Cambridge, and 
Then we just drove up the coast. I gave her a little bit of a driving tour of Marblehead. We went to Marblehead Knits and then came back here. She raided my stash, <laughs> or my stock room, my, my uh, office with all my yarn. And um, then we went to Circle of Stitches, which is where I got this. So Circle of Stitches is the second local yarn shop to me. I'm very fortunate to have two, actually three. There's one in Beverly called Yarn in the Farms. Um, so there are three local yarn shops that are very, very close to me within 10 minutes and 15 minutes of driving. And um, so at Circle of Stitches, um, Anna, who's the owner there, she carries, you know, Malabrigo and Madtosh and Quince Co. and some of the brands that Marblehead Knits doesn't carry, but she also carries other things like um, these little kits. So this is an embroidery kit uh, that I picked up from Circle of Stitches. It was $24 and it is by Cozy Blue. It's a handmade kit that is put together. Um, this one is for show up, be true, be kind, and keep going. And I really felt like this spoke to me, so I, I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna pick it up and do it. So when you open it, you get everything that you need to do this project. So she includes, Liz is the person who designs this, so she includes this card, which is, you know, a little bit of a suggestion card, you know, be cozy and, you know, be relaxed when you're stitching. You know, this is about having fun and, you know, doing things with meaning and all of that. Um, and then she also includes this card, which is about supplies. So all of these things are included in the kit you don't need to have any extra supplies unless you want them. Sorry, <laughs> memory card got full. So here is um, the materials and kind of the things that you need to do. So how to put your fabric in your hoop, threading your needles, how to separate floss because not every um, stitch is going to have all six strands of floss. And um, this was really great. They, she also includes um, stitches, so how to do specific stitches, so if you've never done them before, um, you can, or if you've never heard of them before, you can have a little bit of a tutorial here for the main stitches, especially the ones that she's going to be using in this kit. And then here is the schematic for the kit, and she has suggested colors for the threads, how many strands, and such, and, um, you know, which type of stitch she's using. So whether she's using a back stitch or a running stitch, you know, those things are there. And so in the kit, she includes the floss that you can sort and separate. And she includes these swatch cards, which has the number and color of the DMC floss. So this is all DMC embroidery floss. She includes your needle. So here's my needle and it's attached to some floss because I started stitching on this last night and it's going to be very difficult to see what I've done, but I have started stitching right here using a back stitch. So I decided to do the circular uh, part of the embroidery first. So I've made it from here to here. So probably about two inches of stitching. And I, I only just started this last night. So I thought that this would be a nice um, interruption, but a nice thing to keep in my crafting repertoire. Something that I can easily pick up and put down. I can see where I am. All my materials are here. It's its own unit, so to speak. So I don't really have too much to worry about. Um, and this isn't the actual pattern so show up be true be kind and keep going so i really identify with this message so i was very happy to purchase this also supporting you know small business and small makers that's my jam so those are the things that i've been crafting on recently um very happy with the amount of crafting i've been able to do despite being so busy um and so now I want to go into the things that are going on in the shop and 
um, the things that are there now and the things that will be coming after the new year um, and also that will be coming in the next couple of weeks into the shop which includes a little bit more crafting something maybe that you don't expect to see or if you're following me on Instagram maybe you've already seen it so let's just roll right into it so the first thing I want to mention is my wolf <laughs> Whoops. Uh, first thing I want to mention is my wool soap. So here's the soap. Uh, I have two bars of wool wash left from the first batch that I did. Um, so this is it. If you've been meaning to get it and you haven't yet, please do come and grab them. They are about two and a half ounces a piece. Uh, so not too big, not too small. These should last you quite some time, especially if you don't block your knits all that often or wash your knits all that often. Um, I hand made these bars myself using a hot process method on my stove top. Um, poured, cut, wrapped, all of that myself. These are handmade by me uh, and exactly the way I wanted them. So there's 20% lanolin in these bars um, with olive oil, coconut, lanolin, and castor seed oil. Um, so anyway, I love these. I use it when I wash my wool before I send them to you. Sometimes I do still use Eucalan, but I've been using this wool wash, which has been great. So there are two left. I plan to make another round of soap probably in the next couple of weeks, but those won't be cured and ready to go, you know, fully ready to go for at least six to eight weeks, maybe a little bit more. Um, that's why I did hot process soap because the saponification process is already done in the pot when I pour it into the mold. If I chose to do cold process soap, I would have to wait even longer, probably closer to 12 weeks before um, things were ready to go. So uh, the cure time for these, these were made over the summer. They're extremely hard, like they're not squishy at all. Um, and they're quite lovely. So those, that's that. So that's, um, so if I make them again, they probably won't be available for purchase until mid-February, I would think. Mid-February, mid to late February. So this is it, this is all that's left. So come grab one if you'd like. These make great stocking stuffers as well. The next thing that I've been working on are these. So if you follow me on Instagram, you would have seen these already. These are little notions kits that I put together uh, with embroidery needles, some cute enamel coated scissors. So these are the little crane scissors, some stitch markers. So both suitable for knitting or crochet. So these kind of slip onto your stitch. These are enclosed circles. Um, I like these because they were hearts, which is, you know, my logo and things like that. And then including also a tape measure with the Little Bean logo on it. So here's the back. So there are one, two, three, four. There are five of these left. Five. Five. So if you are in the market for a Little Notions kit, I highly, highly, highly recommend grabbing one because this is all that's left. I don't know when I will stock them again, but I stocked them up for the um, holiday season. So also makes a great stocking stuffer or a great combination of both of those things. Here's a little jingle, jingle, jingle. Um, okay, so the next thing that I've been working on is stitch markers. So for the holiday gifting season particularly, it's why I made these up. I also have been wanting to make these up for quite some time. I've had the materials sitting and I was like, just get on it and just make them. So. I have some sets of stitch markers. These aren't art cards yet. I've just had them hanging on my um, rack. But these are kind of suited toward the Affirmations collection. So this one is a set of six, six stitch markers. So these are um, enclosed with a lobster claw. So they're a progress keeper or a crochet stitch marker, whatever you prefer. Um, so we have some phrases here. You got this. Start today, enjoy every day, choose happy, yay, and be you. So I have this set. I also have this set, which has also the same type of phrases. This one, follow your heart, love, inspire. Um, what does this one say? Go for it. So these are kind of reminders 
that you can have and keep on your projects that might inspire you or move you to keep creating or to, you know, make another stitch or knit another row or feel really confident in what you're doing. So those two, I also have these, which are brass stitch markers. So on one side says love and on the other side is a lovely little heart, which kind of goes along with my logo and pretty much my shop mission generally <laughs> and again lobster claws here and then the last one the last set that i made up so these are longer and these say choose joy follow your heart and be the light and i made these with little swarovski crystals and freshwater pearls so to kind of accent the markers so each set has a different different colors of crystals in there um and again lobster clock enclosures so um i have several sets of each in the shop and um they were very fun for me to make and i hope that you guys really enjoy them as well um and they come they will become they come packaged like this so on a card in a bag you know with stitch markers and they're laid out and enclosed in a bag but for now I still just have them <laughs> kind of hanging out at the moment uh, if I can find a picture I'll put it up here of one that I had packaged up so that you know how it looks like packaged the next thing that I have here that I put into the shop for the gifting season particularly but I plan to just keep stocked is a mug that I created uh, it says stitch sip repeat and then on the other side is the Little Bean Loves Yarn logo. And it says Little Bean Loves Yarn. And so I thought these were so cute. Um, Sunshine and yellow on the inside, which I love. Uh, and I thought it would be nice for either knitter or crocheter for yourself or someone else um, to enjoy. <laughs> I'm having such trouble with focus today. Here we go. <laughs> um, so for any fiber artist, even if you're doing embroidery, stitch, sip, repeat. So to enjoy your tea or coffee or cocoa or water or whatever you like. So these are also in the shop for the gifting season and to the foreseeable future. And then the last thing is the alpaca bag and it's back. So this is the beautiful bag that I created and designed. So I did this piece of art. So this is a combination of colored pencil and digital art. And it's an alpaca with rainbow hair. And it says Little Bean Loves Yarn. And initially, this was on a different bag, but I was having trouble with the printer. Um, so through my Shopify site, I'm able to directly um, commission a printer so you can order something and it will be printed for you by the printer and shipped to you by the printer. But I was having trouble because I only had the bag in stock for a couple of weeks and one person ordered it and then after she had ordered it, the print, the print, I got an email from um, the printer saying, oh, this company who is doing the printing for you is out of business and they're shutting down. Um, sorry for any inconvenience and I'm like okay are you refunding are they still finishing out products in queue all this stuff so it ended up being this really huge hassle which kind of left a bad taste in my mouth for commissioning an outside printer because I'd rather have something printed and keep it in stock even though it costs me money to hold these things in stock but anyway so here's the tote it says little bean loves yarn and it's the same bag that I had before the same material, the same bag itself, it just has a different picture printed on it. Um, the the stitches bag where it says, you know, um, to enjoy life, no matter how many stitches you drop. Um, so I got those printed. I have several of those also in stock in the shop right now. Again, suitable for anyone. I love the bag. I use it all the time. I end up carrying my packages to the post office in that bag, which is just perfect because it's huge. and I love it. Okay. So those, 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 okay, these, I also started stocking these. So these are gauge squares. These are the Chagu gauge squares. So on the front has knitting um, needle conversions and gauges. And on the back, it's crochet hooks and gauges. Um, and also recommendations on um, weights of yarn, 
your stitch count and your recommended needle size. So I thought these were really helpful. I've been wanting to stock, um, I've been wanting to stock uh, a needle gauge for a long time in the shop and I wanted it to be more than just a needle gauge because those get lost. And so I thought this was the most useful of the products I could stock and obviously I didn't make this. This isn't handmade by me, it's by Chow Gu, but I thought it was the most comprehensive um, gauge. You know, you can measure your knitting or crochet gauge on here and you can also um, see conversions for both knitting and crochet and gauge your knitting and crochet needles through the same holes. So they're labeled on one side differently than the other. So if you have, for example, a wooden needle that for some reason the printing, like if there was laser printed on it, uh, rubs off or or whatever, that you can have this on hand and it's very useful. So these are also in the stock, shop and in stock. So the next thing I want to show you that is in stock right now are sock tubes. So I have not had a chance to come on here and show you all the sock tubes that are in stock right now. I stocked them about a month ago in preparation for gift needing season, but I've been having trouble with Instagram and, and Facebook and my reach on those platforms because it seems that they've changed the algorithm once again. And so I wanted to come on here and film and show you these tubes that are knit up. So I have several um, colors. These are all speckled gradients and they're all 115 rows unless I otherwise say and they're all the same gauge so 60 stitches around eight stitches per inch and about 10 inches per row so here is one and it goes from a purple to a light orange this one goes from a rusty orange to a light orange this one goes from a dark brown to a dark blue. And these are identical as well. So these were dyed on a double stranded, um, these were dyed on a double stranded sock blank. So like it's hard to see because I knit them sequentially and I just kept them together. You can see that they look opposite, but it's because of how they were knit. Um, <clears throat> so here it is. So dark blue to a dark brown, a really cool, cool brown here. This one goes, it's not quite a gradient, um, it's more, you know, shifts in color. So this kind of shifts from a hot pink to like a muted purple, but there are some dark spots in the middle, which is kind of cool, right around where your heel would go. This one grades from a dark muted purple to a black. This one grades from a brown to an orange. So you might recognize these. These are the speckled gradients, so I might only have one or two left in the shop. But this is how Dragon's Flame, so if you remember that speckled gradient, I'll pop a picture here of it um, that I was selling a few months ago. This is how it knits up in a sock. So whenever you see speckled gradients from me that are pairs that are um, you know, intended for socks, and you're ever wondering what they look like, this is what my speckle gradients look like knit up in a sock. Um, they would look lovely in any other medium as well, whether you're knitting a shawl or a scarf or anything, but this is how they look like in socks, so that's really cool. So this goes from a bright orange all the way to a dark brown, the cool brown. This one goes from a dark navy blue to a brighter kind of oceany blue. And then this one goes from um, a bright oceany blue down to a sand, and it kind of goes through some gray tones in the middle, which I think this is my favorite, um, and it's quite lovely. And these are all one of a kind, one pair of socks. These are not going to be replicated again. Um, this one is 110 rows, and this goes from a bright pink to a fluorescent green, which is quite fancy. And then this one is 100 rows, so it's the shortest of the tubes, but it was when I was trying to ration out my yarn to make sure that I could knit the tubes as long as possible uh, for each pair. This was the first pair that I cast on, so uh, it was a little bit of a 
curve. So this goes from a dark black into a fluorescent pink. So quite striking <laughs> socks these would make. Maybe a shorter pair of socks. So those are all of the sock tubes that are in stock right now. You can go to the shop, grab them. They're under the gradients section or in the everyday socks section or in the new in the shop section. So right on the front page, as you go to the website, you can see shop what's new in the in sh shop what's new in stock. It's right in the front banner when you go to the website. You can click there or if you scroll a little bit, there's a section called new in the shop. Anything that's new, in the last update goes in that section. You can see there's a little banner um, on most of the items that says new so that you know it's new. Um, and those are there. Um, for the taking, I recommend if you know if you're going to pair it with a mini skein, uh, you can either buy one that's already in stock or you can ask me to dye one and I'm happy to do so. I do have a dye to order section for tonals and you can order pretty much any base that I carry with any tonal color that you want. And I'm happy to suggest colors that would pair very well with the gradients that are in the shop or with any skeins that are in the shop. I'm happy to suggest a tonal color that would go well with those things. <clears throat> All right, we're getting to the home stretch. We're almost finished. My voice is held out, which is wonderful. So now to the last piece. So for those of you who've been following me for quite some time, you know that I am a woman of craft. I craft anything, everything. I can do any type of craft that I choose to put my mind to. I've done a lot of crafts in the past. I am 34 years old and I have a lot of experience with different mediums. In college, particularly, I did you know, drawing and painting. I did a fine arts minor. I was able to do glass blowing, which was wonderful. I also did two years of ceramic work which was great. And in my adulthood, a lot of those things kind of have come and gone as things move along. And so some things that have stuck with me, obviously crochet has stuck with me and now knitting and also other things that have come into play in the fiber arts realm, doing spinning or weaving or any of those things. Um, I, I'm not afraid to try new things. And so um, <clears throat> I had an idea. <laughs> As one often does, if you're of a creative mind, you know what I'm talking about, where it's kind of like an earworm. You just, you get something in your brain that doesn't go away until you actually do it, and you think about it all the time, and you lose sleep over it. If it's just me, maybe it's just me, but I am that way. And so what I wanted to do was to go to a local pottery studio and throw some yarn bowls. Now, I hadn't thrown clay for about 10 years. I graduated college in 2006 and it is 2018 so 12 years <laughs> was the last time I had thrown any clay and so I went down to Clay Dreaming which is in Beverly, Massachusetts, a couple towns over from me and I signed up to be an independent student there because I already had experience. I already knew what I was doing. I just had to actually do it. And so I went in, bought myself 25 pounds of clay, paid for a month, now two months of um, pottery. And then this is the fruit of my labor for the last month. Um, I've not kept it a complete secret, but I didn't really reveal anything until last week when my first pots came out of the kiln. And then also um, today I posted some more on my Instagram. So definitely go check it out over there. I got some glamour shots going on in my story, got it in my regular feed. So um, go check it out. But here I will show you the pots that I have been working on. And I'm going to kind of explain the glazes that I used on it, um, the shapes that I was experimenting with, and hopefully these will be in the shop for you guys. This week on Saturday, I'm going to put these in, even though I still have more coming out of the kiln, um, probably Friday or Saturday this week. So here we go. So the first pots I'm going to show you are the first ones to have come out of the kiln, <laughs> so to speak. I had someone ask me and say like, oh, I thought you had commissioned a potter for those. I didn't realize you made them. Yes, I made them. <laughs> um, welcome to my life. I'm constantly doing other things. <laughs> so, uh, plus I wanted to take a little bit of a break from dyeing since I had done a lot of heavy dyeing the month previous, 
with all of the um, advent calendar boxes and then um, you know all the gradients and things like that I did want to take a little bit of a break so here are the pots um, so these are the first two that came out of the kiln I used a bronze color and a green color to glaze it one side is matte and one is glossy and on the back you can see there's a couple of holes and a heart for my logo so these are finished you can see on the bottom my signature or my maker's mark right here so if you've ever gotten an order from me that would look familiar to you <laughs> uh, I always sign my orders with a heart and the letter K because my name is Kayleen and I always write heart K so um, yep yeah, so these are mine made them myself through them myself um, so this one particularly is good this is about 60 grams this is a cake this would be good about 60 grams or under but this one even though it is shorter is suitable for 100 grams uh, of sock yarn for show um, I was doing tests on all of these bowls just you know pulling the yarn in different ways boom um, and I like that they have a smaller footprint because I didn't want to make yarn bowls that were too large. Uh, for me, I have, I'm limited on space, personally, and I know a lot of folks who are also limited on space. So I was trying to make bowls that were wide enough and had enough of a, a spread, so to speak, so the opening of the bowl, um, but still enough weight at the bottom so that they wouldn't really shift too much when you were pulling your yarn and would still fit 100 grams. So there are a lot of things, factors in the um the thing here the thing so here's two more so i have a black glaze layered with a blue glaze it makes this really lovely um starry effect around the rim so this one you can see got a little bit warped in the kiln um which is okay it's just a yarn bowl but this lip going on the inside here made it hard for 100 grams to really roll around so I would suggest also 60 grams or less for this particular bowl. And I'll be sure to put it in the listings. Um, but this one fits 100 grams, surely, for show. There we go. So that's 100 grams right in there. Spins freely. Um, and you could feed it through either thing. So either the holes here or the swoop here, depending on what you like. And then here, this is my favorite glaze, and so I did this glaze again on the bowls that are coming out of the kiln this weekend. Um, it's like an orange, orange-red color on the bottom, and on the top was layered with a green, and it come, came out with this lovely, like, silvery green sheen, and it almost twinkles on the inside. I'm not sure how well you can see that. Um, so this one is beautiful. This is exactly what I wanted out of a yarn bowl, not too big. Um, and would fit 100 grams of yarn. And then this one was my favorite one. Um, it had a little bit of a warp here from the kiln, so it might have been closer to the edge of the kiln, but like, look at how beautiful. Again, this is my pottery. <laughs> I threw it myself. Um, but because it had a little bit of warp, there's a piece of glaze here that's stuck. So it is still functional. You can still pull the yarn through here, but you just can't pull it all the way through to here. Um, <clears throat> so I'm still going to sell it because I think it's functional and it looks beautiful. And you can still use this part of the bowl for a thin piece of yarn. Um, but you can see just like how silvery green this looks. It is just, mm, mm. and I love the foot on this one. I was trying to get a really nice foot on all of my pieces. So those are the things that I have been working on. Keep an eye out on Instagram. I will post on Instagram when I'm listing these bowls, when I've listed anything. Um, if you have any questions for me, please do leave them in the comment section down below. Um, I would love to talk more about the pottery. If you want me to go in depth on the type of clay or whatever I've, I've been doing, I'm happy to do so. Uh, just leave any comments or questions in the in the the section down below and yeah I hope you guys enjoy your week your weekend and that you guys are having a nice 
a ramp up to the Christmas season. If you are Jewish, happy Hanukkah. Hanukkah, I believe, just ended uh, yesterday or the day before. So happy Hanukkah to you. If you celebrate any other holiday, happy holidays to you. For me, Festivus for the rest of it. Perhaps I'm showing my age a little bit with that reference, but you know. <laughs> um, anyways, I hope you guys did enjoy. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye.